Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So hopefully you guys saw that recent episode I did about Kip from What the Health and Dr. Garth Davis being on the doctors, you know, supporting and defending the positions taken up in that movie about the healthfulness of a plant-based vegan diet. Well, I knew they were in a lot of trouble when I saw them both seated, seated on the floor, particularly Dr. Garth Davis, a medical doctor forced to sit on the floor, not up on the stage with the other doctors. And they treated him as such. Very, they were very hostile and aggressive towards him, barely letting him speak a word. Well, strangely, a little bit before that, they had a vegan doctor on the show and they let her appear on stage. Her name is Dr. Christy Funk. And they actually listened to what she had to say, at least some of it, about the dangers of meat and dairy. I think all of the meats are less healthy than you might be led to believe. Actually, the fifth source of saturated fat in, our, in the American diet is cheese, and then there's pizza, which is more cheese. And number five is chicken. Well, just like Dr. Garth Davis, Dr. Funk here has her facts down right. Yeah, I double checked them. Everything she says checks out 100% true. Hmm, what why it's so easy for the vegan doctors to get their stuff straight? Well, unfortunately now, Dr. Stork feels like he has to get his opinion out there. I, I eat a little bit of everything, but I've always said that I pay close attention to how whatever food I'm eating was cultivated, how, if it's meat, how was that animal raised? If it's cheese, which comes from a cow. How, how was that cow raised? Sadly, Dr. Stork resorts to one of the dumbest arguments I've heard about why it's okay to eat meat. Yeah, he pays attention to how the animal was raised. Like, how does he know what animal he's talking about? It's just all meat to him. Yeah, maybe he tries to get more like grass-fed rather than factory farm, but the end result is, yeah, the animal is held in captivity and ultimately killed for his eating pleasure and like like he can find this information out about the animal when he goes out to restaurants he's just full of it here trying to make himself look good i love cheese i would i wouldn't okay. i literally and the thing is you won't i love cheese i don't want to live life without cheese <laughs> I'm, you? so dr stark are you saying as a medical doctor for some reason you're unable to change unable to modify your eating behaviors based upon learning some inconvenient truths about cheese you have to realize in my research, I was like, no, don't take away my five-year age Gouda, not my Manchego. <laughs> like I had an entire drawer dedicated to <laughs> high-end cheeses in my house. And that's why I respect a doctor like Dr. Funk there. Not only because she's vegan, but she has the good sense to understand the science and change what she eats as a result. Yeah, cheese was not healthy and she Stopped eating cheese. What's so hard about that, Dr. Stork? Proteins and carbohydrates, four calories per gram. One gram of cheese, nine calories. So when you take, it takes 10 gallons of milk to make one pound of cheese. So you're concentrating it down. I know, I know, I see your face. Uh-oh, she sees that look on Dr. Stork's face. Apparently he's been triggered by this discussion of why cheese isn't particularly good for people. Um, the, That's why they're the so good. Because uh, I've done the research too on the cheese, and cheese has not been associated with... 70% saturated fat. I know, but you can say that, but there's other data out there that supports an opposing viewpoint, which I have. Of course, Dr. Stork supports this opposing point of view that meat is healthy, cheese is healthy. He said pretty much the same thing when, when Kip and Dr. Garth were on the show, that why didn't they interview doctors that supported this other side that says meat and cheese are healthy? When I was watching it, you said you went out to talk to doctors. It felt to me like it was just talking to doctors on one side who had one perspective. And so as much as I love the documentary, I kept saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, what about the other side? And yes, Dr. Stork is right. There is data out there that supports his point of view that dairy is just fine and healthy. One study that's often cited by these types is a study found in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. And the study reaches the startling conclusion that a diet high in saturated fatty acids from meat and dairy cause you to have more of the good HDL cholesterol. And therefore, this high meat and cheese diet is less atherogenic, meaning causes less fatty plaques to build up in your arteries than a high carb diet. Wow. However, if we have a look at the sources of funding for this study, you'll see no less than four sources from the dairy industry. So it really is hard to take the findings from this study seriously. And earlier this year, all hell broke loose on the internet when this study was published. It was about milk and dairy consumption and risk for cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality. 
And again, quite surprisingly, the researchers in this study found no link between dairy consumption with heart attack, stroke, or all-cause mortality. So, as a result, news outlets around the world ran with this headline saying, dairy is good for you, eat more cheese, it's good for your health, it will not cause heart attack or stroke. However, once again, if you look at this study's sources of funding, you'll see three sources from the dairy industry. But it gets even worse. If you look at the conflicts of interest for the authors of the study, you'll see no less than a dozen conflicts of these authors being intertwined with the dairy industry. I mean, how stupid does the dairy industry think we are? Is it just crazy coincidence that when they sponsor studies, they get conclusions that make their industries look good and healthy. Yeah, cheese is good for you. However, let's take a look at some examples of non-dairy industry funded research, like this one here pulled out of the facts page from What the Health. And this study clearly shows there is a connection between dairy consumption and risk for mortality after breast cancer diagnosis. But it's not just Dr. Stork, his, his buddies on the show are consistently referring to industry-funded studies to debunk veganism. For example, when Garth Davis was on... Walt Willett, who's the chair of the Department of Nutrition at Harvard okay. School of Public Health, where I did my public health Dr. degree, Willett. basically has done a study that shows that people who consume eggs don't have a higher risk of mortality. Another study just came out with 44,000 people okay. that showed all-cause mortality was less mm -hmm. in people who and consumed who one egg per study? day. Who funded, who funded, funded that study? Funded by industry. That was an egg-industry-funded no, study. No, you guys are talk about but the point unreal. Is that unreal. You can Indeed, Dr. Garth speaks truth here. If you look at the conflicts of inches for this study that says eggs are good for you, there's at least two sources of funding that come from the egg industry. All right, well, let's jump back to Dr. Christy Funk's episode here. Next, you'll see Dr. Stork give one of the worst arguments I've ever heard as to why people can't possibly go vegan. No, but I come out here to LA and, and no offense, but every other restaurant <laughs> is perfect and I love that. I love having choices in LA, but it's just not the reality. Yes. You go you go to other parts of the country and 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 it it's it's impossible to sit here and say okay, we're I'm not saying we can't move there and I'm not saying that I don't eat a primarily vegetarian based diet cuz I do believe in that. But I, I am of the belief that we've got to start taking incremental steps mm -hmm. because realistically there are still wide swaths of the country where Wow, Dr. Stork, do you actually believe anyone to buy that horrible line of reasoning? So you're saying that people can't give up cheese or can't go vegan because there's some parts of the United States where it's hard to find a healthy restaurant or a vegan restaurant. Really? I mean, that assumes that people do the bulk of their eating at restaurants. I mean, I'm sure some do, but most people don't. They just can't afford that. Most people make most of their food. So if you're making your food, you have the choice to put cheese on. If you saw like what the health and you learn that cheese is not particularly good for you, then you can choose not to put it on there. Who who cares what restaurants are nearby your house? It's your choice. Secondly, Dr. Stork, you have no leg to stand on. You have no excuse. You live in Los Angeles where we have plenty of healthy restaurants, plenty of vegan restaurants, yet you're still resisting instead of embracing veganism because of all the wealth of science, the kind of science that Dr. Garth was exposing you guys to and what the health it was exposing you guys to, you resist that. You just say, that's just one side of the story. There's this whole other side of the story that says meat and dairy is good for you. Well, as I've shown you, all those studies are, are supported by the meat and dairy industries. Yet for some reason, why do you keep siding with them? I mean, you have this other side, which has more science, science that's not supported by industry, but you side with the ones that are in industry funded. So I wanna know what is going up, guys. Let me know down below. Are they just dense? Do they just not get it? Or is it because they're beholden to the advertisers on their show, which advertise a lot of meat and dairy? Is that what's going on? Let me know. It's just bu been bugging me ever since I first discovered this show when we're on it. How does this thing that they always do, they always support the wrong side. What is up? So let me know what your theories are down below. That's it for this time. So Dr. Stork, listen to me, bro. Keep it carved, baby. Keep it carved.